Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul Perdue, and I am a nerd, and you are lucky enough to be here for the December 2016, boy, look at all those Christmas cookies, edition of the Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting. We have Christmas cookies in the conference room, so if I disappear and am not there when Mary Jo tries to talk to me, you will know where I am. And today we are talking about integration with Outlook, specifically turning emails into things. Uh, Mary Jo is going to talk about how to turn an email into a calendar entry, and I'm going to turn talk about how to turn an email into a journal entry, which basically is taking an email and putting it in Practice Master and tying it to a specific matter. Without further ado, I'm going to press, oh, just a few magic buttons here, just a couple. And I am going to get us out of here, maybe. Can I really do this? There we go. See, I just don't know what the magic buttons are, apparently. And Mary Jo is going to take us into Practice Master here after she asks for keyboard and mouse. There we go. And she's going to tell us all about Outlook integration. Fun stuff. All right. So I'm going to get into Practice Master here. So when we talk about um, Outlook integration with Practice Master, uh, there's a lot of different things that we can do, and we're going to focus today mainly on calendar, creating from an email um, a calendar record in Practice Master. Um, but before you can even do that, you need to have the toolbar installed. And so we have several different toolbars that we can put into a lot of different programs, but we definitely need the Outlook toolbar. Most of you probably already have that, but if you don't see a little Practice Master um, toolbar in your Outlook up here, then you do not. Um, now, some older versions of Outlook used to put it under the add-in, so you might have it there, but you would, should have this Practice Master up on that ribbon. Uh, if you don't have that, the first thing that you have to do is go into Practice Master to the Integration tab. Once you're here, there's a little toolbar plugins. Looks just like a plug you plug in the wall. We click on that, and the very first tab that we come to is the Outlook toolbar. So we want to go ahead and make sure that that toolbar is installed. So you click on Install Outlook Plugin. It literally takes like two seconds. It'll say Outlook uh, Plugin was installed. If you had Outlook open, it'll ask you to go ahead and restart Outlook. So if you close Outlook before that, you can just go in and close this window after that, and go in and reopen Outlook, and you'll have that little Practice Master toolbar. So when I click on that Practice Master toolbar, it gives me all of my options that I can do for Practice Master, either journal, calendar, or bill for that email by creating a fee. So we're going to talk about the calendar today. So if you have an email that actually includes a calendar date for whatever you are looking at, um, you can go ahead and click on the calendar while that email is highlighted. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you want me to go to, Paul? Okay, and let's just do this recap report. And let's say I want to create a calendar record from this. I'm going to click on the calendar icon, and it's going to go ahead and open Practice Master. And if it knew what the client was um, from that email, now this is just an internal email, but if we knew um, that you'd already journaled an email or it could recognize that email address, it would pre-fill this client ID for you and try to help you out there. But if you don't, um, this may never have been journaled or anything to do with this email before, um, I can go ahead and pick the date that I want the due date to be on. Um, you can use your drop down. This is just a calendar window now for Practice Master. Choose the calendar code, description, and it's pasted in the body of the email right into the comments. I find this helpful when I do appointments for when I'm going to have a training session or an appointment with a client. I can go ahead and take that email that confirmed our meeting and what we're going to talk about and just go ahead and create the calendar record and everything we're going to talk about is in that email already. I don't have to retype it. It's all pre-populated for me. And it puts it right in when that email came in and how I was go ahead, uh, how I was getting that information to go ahead and put in the calendar. Then I can just go ahead and finish my entry by creating an event or a task, my start time, end time, put in the client ID, uh, other information that I need if it's other calendars, and I can save that entry and it will be immediately over into tabs. So I'm just going to put this under me um, just so that I can put it under a blank uh, client. I don't want to put it under real client. And I'll just go ahead and save this. 
And I probably, oh, I'm in test data. I can't do it in test data. Oh, this works out even better because I'll just put it under David Klein, Daniel Klein, whoever that is. I'm like putting me in going, oh, i got to do this. All right, so we'll save it. And so now uh, I'm going to just cancel my spell check there. Um, oops, of course I should have finished that. There we go, 8 to 5. We'll just have whatever this is. Save it. And now underneath, I'll go back into this practice master. And underneath the client, or even on my monthly calendar, I'd be able to see that. But here's Daniel Klein. We'll go to his calendar record or tab. And then there is that email that I had that's on his calendar. This also would show up on my monthly or weekly view of my calendar as well, my daily view. And it's already in there. So all of that pre-populated just by clicking that PM calendar button instead of having to go in here, find the client, put it in there, and create it all from scratch, I can get part of that process sped up a little bit. Paul? I use this a lot when I am getting emails from people that I need to follow up on. Uh, either I need to connect with them and do something, or I have some task that they're giving me that I just need to do, I can create a task item from it. I see a lot of my clients, a lot of our attorneys using it when they get emails from clients or from from uh, opposing counsel or whatever, scheduling depositions, scheduling events. So it can be used for both tasks and events, but the important part is that that body of that email is captured right there for you to refer to later. Now, Capturing that body of the email can also be important just from a case management or practice management standpoint. And so the thing I'm going to show you is that you can, uh, add, first off, I want to emphasize that uh, Mary Jo did that calendar item, and so there's a C here in the deleted items to indicate that this item, this mail item, has already been used to create a calendar item. Kind of cool. So you can look at your, your inbox or your send items or whatever it is that you're journaling this from and see instantly how, uh, which items you've calendared, which items you've journaled, which is what I'm going to show you. And I think last week, month or a month before we talked about creating fee entries from emails and that fee entry would show up, uh, that F would show up to indicate that that item had been billed with an F to indicate the fee entry was created. So I'm going to take a different email and I am going to create a journal record. Now, I want to preface this by saying usually the emails that you journal that you actually save as emails to Practice Master as opposed to what Mary Jo did, which was create a calendar item, usually they're in your sent items. Why? Because if an email is important enough to reply to, that reply is probably something that you need to put into Practice Master. Uh, 99, 98% of the emails that get journaled I'm willing to put money on this, come from the sent items. Occasionally, you'll take something from your inbox and put it in Practice Master. But for me, that's usually when somebody says, uh, yes, I agree that 1 o'clock is, is a good time to meet. Uh, so that's their confirmation. And I'm not going to reply and say thanks. I'm just going to I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yes, they've agreed that 1 o'clock is a good time. Uh, and, and they end their email with, see you then, or talk to you then, and I'll journal that. So occasionally I'll take something from my inbox and journal it into Practice Master, but most often it's your sent items. Now stick with me here because this is important. If you're out on the road, you're in court, you're in a client's office, you're, you're on your way to work and you've stopped at Starbucks to get coffee, and you're answering emails, you're sending items, these items, and again, this is an assumption, but... I'm assuming that you're using Exchange to control your Outlook. And that means that all these emails are being stored in your sent items on the Exchange server. So the email that you reply to will still be in your sent items when you get back to the office. So if you, if you reply to an email on your phone or on your iPad or from your home computer using Outlook Web Access, that sent items is still going to be in there. And so when you get back to the office, you'll be able to look, and we're going to pretend that this is my sent items. It's really my deleted, but we're going to pretend it's my sent. You'll be able to look at all the emails that you sent since the last time you journaled them and see which ones you need to put away and which ones you have put away because they'll have a J in this column. So all we really do then is we do we go to the same button bar that Mary Jo installed to show you how the calendar works, and we hit the journal button. 
And since I've already journaled email from Paul at paulperdue.com, and since I've done it to this desk client, Michael Larson, it already knows where this email should go. Now, if you're communicating with a client about their single matter, then this is always pretty much going to be right. But if you're com communicating with a client that has multiple matters, you can't assume that the matter that Practice Master picks has where it thinks this uh, email should be journal is going to be correct. Michael Larson does happen to have multiple matters. And if I had meant to put this on the employment issue matter, and I hadn't been paying attention to the fact that it was going to the workers' comp Larson versus Bell Core matter, then I would be putting it in the wrong place. Another cautionary note is, if I'm sending an email to Mary Jo about one client, and then I send her another email about another client, Practice Master would want to take that email and put it with the client that I communicated with her last about, because that's the last time I, where I put it last time I journaled an email to Mary Jo. So when you're communicating with people that are within your own office, you have to be very careful that you're putting them in the right place. When you're communicating with clients that have multiple matters, you've got to be careful that you're putting it in the right matter. When you're computing, communi communicating with an attorney that perhaps is opposing counsel on six different matters, you need to make sure you're putting it in the right place. So just because it pops up and says, this is where I think it should go, doesn't mean it's always going to be right. Now another thing to understand, when Mary Jo did this with the calendar, it took her straight to this screen that was a calendar item. Here we have this quick screen for Practice Master for journaling an email that says, hey, um, I, 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 if there were attachments, they'd show up here. Who do you want to put this on? What client? And you can't put it on a contact, but most often you're putting it on a client. If I hit this Details tab, it's going to take me into the full journal record, where I might want to make a note, a comment that says this is where he admits that it was green instead of blue. Um, and, and I may want to make sure that certain other fields are filled in. Uh, here's an example of how we've customized Practice Master to hold uh, sub, uh, indicate that an uh, email in a particular matter is substantive as opposed to non-substantive from a, a discovery standpoint. So there may be other fields that you want to fill in in the journal record as you're doing this. That first screen really just says, hey, what client are you going to put it on? But if there are other fields that you need to fill in that you may have added to the journal screen like this, or you want to put some comments in, all you need to do is click that Details tab. And when you save it, it'll take you back to email. And it'll put a little J in to indicate you've journaled that email, just like it put the C up here to indicate that Mary Jo had created a calendar item from that email. So that's journaling. It can be done from your sent items no matter where the email originated. So if you're standing in line at Starbucks or you're waiting for your client in their conference room or you're, you're at a trial and you're waiting for the judge to come out and you're answering emails, that doesn't mean you can't put them away in Practice Master because you're not on a device that's got this little toolbar. You just wait till you get back to the office, go back and see which ones you need to journal that don't have the J and put them away. That's that. Now, one other quick thing that I'm going to add on um, to the quick access um, portion of this, because the, the whole idea here is to get things into Practice Master as quickly as possible in the fewest clicks, right? So when we come into our inbox and we're on this home screen or our deleted items or where we are on this home tab, to go ahead and get to that journal and the calendar uh, tabs and, and to be able to do that, we've been clicking over here on this Practice Master tab, and then you've got to go in and you have to click Journal account, Calendar. Um, you can get these icons all up here in your quick access toolbar just by right clicking on them. So the journal, I'm right clicking and adding it to the quick, quick access toolbar. So that's yeah. fast. And it puts it right up here. Same thing with the calendar. You can do that one. And you can also do the fee if you'd like. And that way when I'm on this home screen and I want to move an email quickly uh, to a calendar record or to a journal record, all I have to do is highlight it and then just click up here on one of those two icons or three if you put the fee. And you can go ahead and just do that, get it right to that place immediately. You don't have to go over to the Practice Master and then click on that. Yeah. So um, if you, you know, this is a user by user thing, you can remove them off, you can keep them on, whatever you want to do there. Just by right clicking, you can add it up there very fast. I remember when these ribbons came out, people hated them because you had to click on them. And I think what they didn't realize was that 
you can take those things and get them up there, and that really does make things accessible. And just one other, you may, your quick access note, uh, toolbar may look a little different, again, based on the version of Outlook that you have. So I think we have um, 2010, yeah, so if you've got you know 13 or 16 or 7 or whatever it is that you have, it might look just a little differently, but the functions still should be the same that you can add it to the quick access toolbar. Exactly. Okay, so that's it. Next month, we're going to continue on this Outlook um, uh, at least Mary Jo is on this Outlook tag, and she's going to show you how you configure the defaults for journaling these emails and creating calendar items and creating fees and how you set up these columns in your inbox or your set items or wherever you want to see which emails were journaled or calendared or billed. I am going to talk about something that, gosh, we've never talked about before. It's the quick date calculator. Uh, we had a client that needed it, and, and, and Leanne had never seen it. She told them, oh, we don't have anything like that. And I said, oh, yeah, we do. It's called the Quick Date Calculator. And uh, very helpful in helping you to determine what date's going to be 65 days from today or two weeks from today or whatever. Um, so it's a, a practice master feature that I will talk about next month. Uh, what kind of a host would I be, especially during this holiday season, if I didn't take you into Attorney Computer Systems? Dot com. Notice the clever emphasis on the F that ends the word systems, because without it, you won't get to our website, attorneycomputersystems.com, where you will find, by hovering over the videos drop down, all of our live content, oops, don't know what that is, all of our live content, our tabs three, practice master, and world docs virtual user group meetings, plus our coffee pot webinar series, which I give each month, emphasizing some sort of an ancillary product. Like last Friday, we talked with Nelco, who makes checks and 1099s for the AP and general ledger software. Um, any of these live events, if you click on their item, like the practice master virtual user group meeting, where you are right now, you'll be taken to a page that has a description of the Practice Master bug, we call it, has date and time and links to register for the next one. Now, this is the one you're in right now. Tells you what it's about, gives a description of it. And then as you scroll down, you will find recorded copies of all the prior uh, whatever that is. We're in the Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting, so these are all the prior Practice Master Virtual User Groups from months past. Now, if you're a browser, you can just scroll around. There are literally years and years worth of these. You just keep going next, next, next. There's way more than three screens. As you get further out, it'll show you more screens, or you can just use the next button. There are, what, 19 pages of this right now, so there's a lot of content there. Um, we also, if you hover over videos, you will see our two recorded uh, titles. We have Mary Jo's eBytes video series, which is, they're short little three or four minute videos, and she does one each month on each of the three products we work with, Tabs 3, Practice Master, and World Docs. And we'll just find some neat little thing that we can cover very quickly, and, and she creates her eBytes. Uh, we also have the longer format Paul and Mary Jo show where either I or Mary Jo will take a broader topic and go into much greater, deeper deeper detail, dig a little deeper into, into how it works and, and, and what the substance of that topic is, spending 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes. And so you can browse through here, or if you're somebody who likes to search and go directly to the, the information you're looking for, you can just type something here and either go straight to it through the quick uh, results that'll come up here, or click this button to get the more expanded results. Bottom line, these are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, except that fourth year when they're available for 366 days a year. So that's it for today, that's it for this month, and that's it for this year. Everybody have a good holiday, and we will see you next year in January. Thanks much, bye-bye.